question is Dr. Spurti Chindamaneni, also happens to be my colleague at, uh, during the times of PG. Uh, she has done her MBBS at Chalmada Anandrao Institute of Medical Sciences and DGO at Gandhi Medical College and Masters at Usmania Medical College. And uh, she also holds uh, a fellowship in reproductive medicine from Oasis uh, Fertility Center. And uh, she also has worked an associate consultant in Cloud9 Hospital, Bangalore. And she's going to speak on unruptured follicle syndrome, which is a very common problem we uh, generally encounter in our day-to-day -day practice. Over to you, Dr. Spurti. Thank you, ma'am, for the kind introduction. And a warm welcome and good morning to all the delegates. Thank you. So my topic for today's discussion is luteinized unruptured follicle syndrome. So this term is coined in 1975 and uh, it is defined as failure of ovulation in which despite absence of rupture of the follicle and release of the oocyte, the unruptured follicle undergoes luteinization under the action of LH. And there is a normal production of progesterone and the luteal phase of the cycle is normal. So. Uh, what is the incidence? So I'm sure most of the gynecologists uh, have uh, encountered this problem in regular day-to-day -day practice. And even in 10%, it, it is, the incidence is about 10% in normal uh, fertile women and the incidence is higher in the infertile women. So uh, studies have quoted uh, that the incidence ranges from 6 to 25%. And endometriosis is one important uh, risk factor where uh, the incidence in endometriosis patients is up to 35% in few studies and ranging to alarming 75% in few studies. Uh, what is important here is the recurrence rate. So the recurrence rate is 30% after one uh, LEF and in consecutive cycles, that is after two and three cycles of um, LEF, the recurrence rate increases to almost 75 to 90%. So before talking about luteinization, I want to discuss a little about the basics of ovulation. So ovulation is the most crucial event of the menstrual cycle and it is dependent intricately on the balance between the central and ovarian hormones, growth regulators, enzymes, prostaglandins and steroids. So uh, when uh, in a in normal menstrual cycle, so once the dominant follicle is recruited and the dominant follicle starts producing estrogen, so with increased estrogen, rising estrogen, there is positive feedback on LH and LH, for LH surge to occur, the estrogen level should be at least uh, more than 200 picograms per ml and sustained for a period of uh, 50 hours. So once this uh, peak has occurred, the LH has started producing an LH peak has occurred, ovulation is set to occur after 10 to 12 hours of LH peak and 30, 24 to 36 hours after the estradiol peak. So with LH surge, there are three important steps. One is resumption of meiosis in the oocytes, luteinization of the granulosa cells to form corpus luteum, and it starts producing progesterone, digestion and degradation of the follicular wall to release the oocyte. So the threshold of LH for the first two steps is lower as compared to the third step, that is the release of the follicle. Therefore, at blunted LH levels, luteinization of the granulosa cells occur, and there is elevation of progesterone, but without initiation of the process required for the breakdown of the follicular wall resulting in the trap follicle. So lower mean peak LH level, it occurs in the LEF cycles as compared to the normal ovulatory cycles. So what are the causes? So it is most commonly associated with patients with unexplained infertility in endometriosis. So in endometriosis, uh, as I've discussed, it is the incidence ranges from 35 to 70%. Uh, there is aberrant expression of uh, various interleukins and TNF-alpha and there is uh, decreased uh, LSCGR, aberrant expression of LSCGR receptor expression uh, that results in uh, uh, improper LH uh, action. And also uh, the COX-2 enzyme is aberrantly decreased in patients with endometriosis. So uh, that uh, it, it inhibits the release of prostaglandins and that is one more cause associated with it. And same is with the chronic NSAID use. So patients with uh, inflammatory arthropathies, they take uh, chronic, uh, they have cr chronic NSAID use. So it, that it inhibits, especially the COX-2 inhibitors, selective COX-2 inhibitors, it inhibits the release of prostaglandins and resulting in the LUF. So other causes are like pelvic adhesions, PCOS patients, hypoprolactinemia, and ovulation induction drugs. Studies have shown that especially uh, clomiphene citrate, it has higher incidence uh, of LUF because, uh, the, because of the action, this, uh, it inhibits the central uh, uh, E2 receptors in the hypothalamus and because of the long half-life, the, there is inadequate uh, estradiol uh, production and that leads to improper LH surge and that leads to LUF. 
So uh, the exact mechanism leading to LEF is unclear, but as studies have said that impaired, that is advanced mid-cycle LL search, but low LH peak is one uh, uh, factor, and lower concentration of the LH receptors in the corpora lutea, and uh, there is uh, decreased mid-luteal uh, progesterone levels have been observed in patients with ovulatory uh, LEF as compared to ovulatory follicles. And uh, others are uh, primary granulosa cell defect and abnormalities in the prostaglandin synthesis, aberrant prolactin release, and studies have shown that two-third cases of LUF is associated with LPD. So how do we diagnose the LUF uh, cases? So a serial ultrasound is required to diagnose the uh, case of LUF. So a normal uh, a follicle, a mature follicle of at least 18 to 20 millimeters is known to contain a mature follicle and the serum is all of at least 400 picograms per ml. So we see a sonolucent halo 24 hours prior to ovulation and a cumulus-like shadow 36 hours prior. When a Doppler is done, there is rising in the PSV with low resistance index suggests that the follicle is close to rupture. So ovulation is confirmed by disappearance of the follicle or collapsed follicle or corpus luteum with internal echoes and presence of hyperechoic smooth secretory endometrium, presence of free fluid in the cul de sac. So in ultrasound uh, features, for, in, for diagnosis of LUF, we see that uh, there is no uh, follicular, failure of follicular rupture with the follicular wall, the thickness increases. There is thicker follicular wall and presence of echogenic fibrin-like strands in the follicular antrum suggestive of hemorrhage. There is no free fluid, but because of production of uh, progesterone, the endometrium is echogenic. Uh, when we do a Doppler, because, of, uh, because there is hardly any angiogenesis, the color Doppler it shows RI is more than 0.5 and PSV is less than 10 centimeters per second. Uh, and progesterone, if the value is done, it is more than 1.5 nanogram per ml. So these are the ultrasound pictures which shows the uh, ovulatory follicle turning into LUF. So the thickness has increased and the size has increased in presence of echogenic uh, foci in the uh, antrum suggestive of hemorrhage. So we differentiate corpus luteum from LUF by Doppler mainly. Uh, there is uh, peripheral vascularity, the ring of fire appearance in the corpus luteum, which is not seen in LUF. So we have diagnosed. Now the patient bombards us with the questions. When we break the news that the follicle is not yet ruptured. So uh, uh, counseling is important, that, uh, especially in patients with risk factors, patients with endometriosis, or when we, uh, with a previous history of uh, LUF. So one must counsel that uh, the, about the recurrence rates and once, uh, if we encounter the patient in a natural cycle, if an LUF is seen, uh, HCG trigger alone is sufficient for uh, ovulation. And this causes reduction in LUF of 46%. And uh, letrozole is better than clomiphene. If we are going for ovulation induction, studies have proven that letrozole is better than clomiphene in reducing the incidence of LUF. And HMG is better than CC uh, letrose in LUF. And uh, that is HMG for ovulation induction and HCG trigger is efficacious for LUF reduction. So these are certain studies, uh, they are uh, published, this is a prospective study published in 2009, uh, which has studied the impact of luteinized unruptured follicle on the outcome of controlled ovarian stimulation. So is there any relation to stimulation protocol? And they have found that uh, the same, the incidence in CC HCG cycles is 16% as compared to sequential CC HMG with HCG it is 5% and in HMG HCG it is 0.1%. And this particular study is also published in 2009 and they have studied particularly in PCO patients and they have also found the same, that is the incidence with CC is more when compared to CC HMG uh, or HMG only cycles. And they have also found that this LUF cases, they have significantly low mean uh, mid luteal uh, progesterone levels and shorter luteal phase length and zero pregnancy rate. So this uh, randomized trial, it is published in 2016. This has studied, because we normally, because of the cost ineffectiveness or because of the side effect profile, we no, do, do not generally give only HC, HMG cycles. So we try, tend to combine CC uh, with HMG or letrose with HMG. And they have found that letrose with HMG have found, have got lower incidence of LUF when compared to CC with HMG. And uh, is there any role of booster dose of HCG uh, for an unruptured follicle in non-IVF cycles? So this is a randomized uh, study. This is published in uh, 2021 and they have concluded that booster dose of HCG for unruptured follicles has no benefit in ovulation triggering nor in the prevention of LUF syndrome. So uh, is there any role of GCSF? So GCSF is a pro-inflammatory cytokine. It is uh, found in increased concentrations in uh, follicular fluid. It leads to increase in the neutrophils, which causes degradation of the follicular wall and subsequent rupture. 
So a few studies have been done. This particular study by Shibata et al. in 2019, they have uh, uh, studied the effect of GCSF as a potential inducer of ovulation in women with LUF and they have uh, taken two regimens. So one is to give 100 micrograms of uh, GCSF 24 to 48 hours prior to trigger or give, to give direct 300 micrograms at the time of trigger along with HCG. And they have found that it significantly inhibited the LUF syndrome uh, induced by the overall uh, ovulation induction drugs. So uh, is it any role of analog trigger? Uh, so GnRH analog, it induces final maturation of the follicles through surge in both FSH and LH. So this is, uh, when we see in the normal menstrual cycle, there is a small FSH LH in, along with that. So, uh, and this study has shown that in uh, uh, LUF patients, it can be given as an option. And when we give agonist trigger, we have to uh, uh, give a luteal phase support. And in, in case of persistent cycles, uh, cycle of OCPs does. And to summarize, one must diagnose, the diagnosis should be proper for a LUF. And appropriate follicular monitoring and timing of the trigger is important. And associated hyperprolactinemia, hypothyroidism must be treated. And in case of ovulation induction, uh, letrozole is better than uh, uh, clomiphene citrate. And even if we see that, af even after that, HMG is better. And for ovulation trigger, HCG, single dose is enough. But even if with HCG, if we see, agonist trigger or adding GCSF will do. Thank you.